Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters. started in 1954 so it's been in my life forever since I was a kid you know as a little kid coming in here the smell of the hamburgers and all that my grandpa working hard it just um, it was just a dream I had that someday I would do it you know and when my grandpa retired and my uncle bought it I thought that dream would been shattered you know I figured it for sure it would go to his son his son would buy it but when he got ready to sell then his son wasn't interested and uh, he approached my parents to see if they would buy it they said yes, and so then they approached me to see if I would, and uh, then I got to realize my dream come true as a little kid, and I'm, I've been here 20 years now. 25 if you count, I've worked for my dad five years. Sounds like a lot of years to work, but when you're only open six months, and you gotta be pretty proficient at every spot. Driving's to Kenosha itself, you know, Kenosha was American Motors, it was a motor city. I mean, this was like the Detroit of Wisconsin back in the day, and so we had lots of driving. 1950s style, uh, but we got the bubble lights and the neon, as you can see, and car hops. There's no inside seating at all, you see it in your car. There's some nostalgic in it now, um, late 80s, early 90s, when, you know, there was that question, will the driving go on, and then it kind of became nostalgic. So then younger people wanted to start coming to them because they don't have these things so much anymore. So I would say us and the spot are probably the only two left. Hamburgers and french fries is the main thing here. We tried salads, but they didn't go over so well. This is a burger place, people like burgers. That double cheeseburger is by far the number one seller. The bun is grilled, two pieces of meat and two pieces of cheese, ketchup, mustard, and onions, it's simple. I feel like the burgers are unique because it's hard to replicate it. I could tell you everything that's in it, but you're not gonna get the taste of the burger without the seasoning off the grills. And then we use Velveeta cheese, which melts a lower temp, kind of turns into a cheese whiz almost type of melting point. And so it all gets into the burger and the meat and everything. And that makes us a little different than most other places too. Kenosha is a great city. We get a lot of people from Chicago, Gurney to Illinois too, but uh, most of them are just locals. And when I say locals, within five, six square miles of here. Um, because if you grew up on the other side of town, you're a, a spot person. You know, most people, if they grew up on the north side, they're a big star, and if they grew up on the south side, they're a spot. I still, to this day, surprised when I go somewhere and they're, they say, what's big star, you know? And, and I'm like, how can you live in Kenosha and not know what big star is? So. Everything is delicious. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you today? I'm great. Wonderful. Do you need some time or were you already? I, I don't know. I guess since this is my first time at, at Big Star. Okay. And uh, what would you recommend? Um, A lot of people like the double cheeseburgers. Okay. Um, those are really good. If you want a bigger one, we got the half pound. It's two quarter pound patties. No, I think uh, I think I'm gonna go <laughs> with the <laughs> double cheeseburger. That'd be great. Okay, grilled onion, ketchup and mustard on that. Yes. You got it. Okay, so we're gonna get a double hamburger here. Like I said, the ketchup mustard goes on top. The bun doesn't get toasted on a hamburger bun, just on the cheese. We make about 1,500 burgers a day between the two grills, so that's quite a few burgers. This is Velveeta cheese. We get it in a five pound block from Kraft. Then we cut the block in half and slice it to order. Let that cheese melt a little bit. It's my grandfather. He chose Velveeta cheese for his cheese. Um, nobody's changed it. This is what Kenosha wants, you know? That's what they grew up on. and. We don't change things. We just try to keep them the way they were back when he opened it up. Well, I'm proud to be able to take over for him. It's, it's um, you know, it's an honor. But um, I give the credit to to the business to him. He's he had the vision, and I'm just honored to to be able to be part of it. You know, ready? Yeah, that's great. I'm so excited. Oh, Thank so you I so hope you much. enjoy. That was fast. <laughs> <laughs> the cooks are amazing. Awesome. They really are. Well, tell them thank you so much. Thank and, uh, you. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thanks enjoy. a lot. Yeah, the food is here. And not a moment too soon. 
burgers, specifically the cheeseburger, is a way in which chefs judge each other. Going to a restaurant that has a burger on the menu is kind of like giving an artist a blank canvas. But a place like this, Big Star, these burgers are iconic. This is the double cheeseburger. Ooey gooey, delicious cheese all melted on there. Pickles, grilled onions, all kind of coming together in this nice soft white bun. All right, Northside, let's see what all the hype is about. That's straight up delicious. Yeah, I gotta say, like, there's something so basic and elemental about a good drive in burger. So, the smooth richness of the cheese, the pickles, the grilled onion, you know, that chewiness that you get from burger, that really, really fine burger. This is comfort food at its finest. This is Americana. This is a Wisconsin icon. The bar has been set high. Now we gotta check out Kenosha's only other drive-in, The Spot, a South Side story. I've been here for 40 years at The Spot, driving. So, I mean, I was only 17 when I started working here, but you know, I got married, had a kid, three generations of the original owners. <laughs> it's changed a lot. Same building, they just added to it. This one was just started by Harold, 1945. He just came out of the war and he decided he wanted to build a drive-in and he did. <laughs> His son took it over in the late 90s and then Mark was here, the young, the grandson. So when they sold it, Mark would have been next. So I've been through three families and then these guys. These guys are amazing so far. Uh, double cheeseburgers or bacon double cheeseburgers, mozzarella sticks, cheese squares. Those are our biggest sellers. Right now it seems the green beans and pickle chips are taking a little spike. <laughs> you know, we make homemade root beer can't get that just anywhere. I've had people take three gallons back to Atlanta, Georgia. Every year they come here, I know them when they come in and I know that they're gonna get three gallons while they're here and drink them and come on their way out of town and get three more to take home. But we have our uh, Rip Ear Whirl. It was made by the original owner's wife. She named it. It's like a float all mixed together into a shake, but we call it a whirl. You know, I feel that that to us is one of our unique things that we can get, you know, and our food is really good. I think it's amazing. We get fresh meat every day. The cooks, take, they make it with love, most of them. You know, cause like I said, 40 years, these, kids, these are my kids, pretty much. I have a daughter <laughs> and a grandson, but these are like, I watched all these kids grow up. And I've seen couples get married that met here. Now their daughters are working here. The girl working window, her parents met here. One of my car hops, her parents met here. I've seen it all. I always tell people if I had to work inside of a cubicle, I would have never lasted. I just like being outside, you know. I'm outside, I'm outside every day, eight hours a day, five days a week. People are awesome, you know, and I love my, the people I work with, you've seen them in there. And I think I'd have jumped out a window if I worked in an office. <laughs> I don't think I would have ever done this this long. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. I would like to do a double cheeseburger. Ketchup, mustard, pickles, onions? Yes. I think I would like to do some green beans. You want ranch with them? Um, yeah, why not? I mean, this is Wisconsin after all. <laughs> Somebody called that Wisconsin ketchup. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I, I've heard that. Wisconsin I've never ketchup. Heard it before I love in my it. Life. That was funny. <laughs> that was good. And then I want. So I used to work at a drive-in, and we did black cows. That's a rip your float. Well, it was like rip world. Oh, that's what we call a whirl. A whirl. Yes. Oh well, the, the, you know what's in a name, I guess. I would like a whirl. <laughs> and I would also like a gallon of root beer. Thirsty, huh? Yeah, you know me. Smokes, that's a lot. Look at that! Booyah! Okay. I ordered almost the same thing that I had previous today. This is actually a banner day for me. Two burger joints, one day. And what we see is this double cheeseburger with the cheese, onion, pickle, ketchup, and mustard on this soft white bun. It's distinctly different. This bun is, is softer. You can see it's just a really, really thin layer of bun there. So you get all that meaty richness and goodness kind of packed together. 
the onions on this one aren't griddled. So they have a little bit more of a crunch. But this is a really, really satisfying burger. The other thing that kind of intrigued me is they had fried green beans. Now, this isn't something that you see in most drive-ins. But these green beans look like they've been breaded and deep fried. Some chili flake on there. They look spicy. I dig that. Ooh, that's got a little stank on it too. Yeah. That's going to make the whirl taste even better. The Whirl is a throwback to my memories of being a car hop at the root beer stand in Lafarge. We called these black cows, but apparently when you whirl it together here in Kenosha, it's called the Whirl. That is good. The moral of the story is this. You can't really go wrong grabbing a burger at either of Kenosha's two iconic drive-ins. They're both different, nuanced, the different cooking styles, different serving styles, different accompaniments but the thing that's great is they're both worth a trip into Kenosha come and explore the many many differences and nuances that we have all through the state and tell them the Wisconsin foodie sent you Dane, yes. this is so amazing. It, it's kind of surreal, actually. We're sitting in front of the diplomat, and uh, I, first and foremost, I want to thank you for hosting us today and letting us come in and, and, and hang out a little bit. Yeah, thank you. For those who are unacquainted with the diplomat, can you tell us a little bit about the, like, the style of food that people might expect to find here? When we're developing a dish, what's in season is really important. And also, we're trying to do things in, in good posture. So over the years, you hear things you know, like casual fine dining, and, and the way we really try to approach things is you know, presenting certain nostalgia points in a way maybe you haven't thought of yet. I grew up eating what was put on the table, sure. and ultimately, it was typically something that was really good. You know, burgers, meatloaf, I mean, you know, typical American fare. Sure. Yeah. In your mind's eye, what is the experience of the diplomat for diners? What do you want them to feel? I want them to feel just comfortable. I, I want them to feel as though they experienced something that was not overly stated, but still has uh, quite a bit of thought put into it. You don't want to come across as unapproachable yeah. or anything like that. You know, we want people to feel like they're getting something interesting, but sometimes, you know, you just want someone to come in and not have to guess what this is or pull out their phone and Google uh, a term that, you know, maybe you and I have been accustomed to saying and knowing because of our profession, but, you know, we also want to make sure that, you know, the experience is approachable for everyone. Some people are really into that. Some people want, I'm going to go to this place and I'm going to learn something new or I'm going to try something different. Uh, not everyone is here to do that, sure. you know. So if I was coming into Milwaukee and uh, coming to Brady Street, what are some things that I might expect to find on the menu here? Oh, uh, what time of year is it? Uh, let's say summertime. Okay. You know, that's one thing that we've tried to run a balance of. You know, there are some staple items, but we try not to repeat items. And that's a hard thing to do. <laughs> yeah. But there are things that people really dig. You know, the peanut butter pie gets a lot of calls. You know, another thing that has become part of our, our identity is the Diplomac Burger. And it's not the only thing we want to be known for. Sure. But ultimately, we're very proud of everything that we put on the menu. And, you know, you want to make sure it's approachable. And, you know, what's more approachable than, you know, a cheeseburger? If you don't mind, I would love to try that. But I know that there's more behind the curtain than just a burger at the Diplomat. Yeah. I feel like I'd be selling it way short if I didn't ask you uh, if there's anything else that you might want to put together. So that way we can we can broadcast it and scream it from the rooftops. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, there you know, ultimately you know, here again you know that burger is the the, the kind of precursor to approachability, mm -hmm. and so I think a lot of what we do is actually that indeed. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of things I think we can put together. Awesome, I can't wait. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. We're making a fregola Caesar salad, so we have fregola, which is a Sardinian pasta. We are gonna use some purple mizuna. 
It kind of gives us a lettuce component. We lightly salt it just so it wilts a little bit. We're gonna add some radishes that we're gonna slice very thin. And we always slice them to order, just because if we hold them in any water or, or ice, I mean, it will kind of draw out a little bit of the bite and spiciness of the, the radish. We're gonna season with a little salt, as we always do. A little lemon juice for added acidity. And we take our Caesar dressing, and uh, we developed a, a Caesar dressing recipe that we're happy with. Uh, the kind of key ingredient is we finish it with a little bit of yogurt, which gives it an added acidity. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna add a little bit of breadcrumb. We're going to grate some Cervecchio parm over the top. Caesar salad typically has some sort of Parmesan, right? And just a little bit more breadcrumb. Then we take these ocarones. It's a uh, white anchovy, Spanish anchovy. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of chopped herbs, chives, tarragon, parsley. And that is simply done. There you go. Here we have our fregola salad. So it's dressed with the Caesar dressing. It's a lot like a pasta salad. It's gorgeous. Right on, thanks. It's gorgeous. I really appreciate it. Oh and man, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Enjoy. This is great. So this fregola salad. Fregola is, is a small, tiny pasta which is why Chef had kind of indicated that it is traditionally a pasta salad. Wow. That's amazing. The fregola itself, really creamy, really perfectly balanced with that Caesar dressing. And that's what I want to say about this dish. It is so insanely balanced. You get a little bit of the acidity uh, in the Caesar with the lemon juice, and then you get a little bit of the garlic. You get the anchovy that's been cured and olive oil, and then that vinegar. You get the purple mizuna, and then the daikon. But the thing that's killer, and it takes it completely over the top, are those lemon breadcrumbs. You bite into this thinking you're gonna get that soft mouthfeel like you get with like a, a pasta salad or a macaroni salad even. But that intense crunchiness with that lemon, oh, it's out of this world. And this is so well executed that not one of those ingredients overpowers the other. That's kind of the secret and the hallmark of a great chef is someone who can put together big, big flavors and not have any one of them envelop the other one. This is legitimately good food. Are our, our burger buns. Just a white bun with sesame seeds on top. We use high gluten flour, which gives it a nice, nice texture. This one just came out of the oven, so we use a good amount of melted butter, and that's how we toast the buns. You know, when we have this burger, we're talking Thousand Island lettuce, onion, tomato, American cheese, kind of like a quintessential toppings for a burger. There you go, one diplomat. Oh my gosh. How did you not expect this thing to blow up? <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> this is a beast. Right on. Well, enjoy. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I never met a burger I didn't like. One of my actual MOs is when a chef brings out a knife with the burger, it's usually in the best interest to cut the burger before trying to eat it. So that is actually what I'm gonna do. Oh man. And that house-made bun, nice and glazed on the outside like an egg wash on that thing so it's got a crisp crunch to it and then the inside it's just enough bun to support all of that that is delicious probably the quality of the meat actually comes through first this is really really high quality and i can tell that based on the amount of fat that's in that burger and its ability to pick up that char smoke. It's really good. The secret sauce, AKA the garlic aioli mixed with house-made ketchup. You're not gonna find anything like that. This isn't something that you can uh, easily pick up and make at home. House-made pickles are just right. It's got a little bit of sweetness. It's got a little bit of saltiness, but it's just right for the crispiness. Lettuce, finely shredded, tomato, red onion, 
This burger has all the makings of a legend. There are so many options for delicious burgers. You have your classic drive-in burger. You have your beautiful chef-created burger. And to be fair, I've never really met a burger that I didn't like. But I think in order to really figure it out, you've got to taste it for yourself. And the spot is a Southside Eatery that came strongly recommended to us by uh, one of the Wisconsin foodie longtime employees, Nelson Schneider. This is his neighborhood jam. I feel like I get this all up in my mustache. How am I? Am I doing good? Oh, I got a cold that is. Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters. The dairy farmers of Wisconsin are proud to underwrite Wisconsin Foodie and remind you that in Wisconsin, we dream in cheese. Just look for our badge. It's on everything we make. At Organic Valley, our cows make milk with just a few simple ingredients. Sun, soil, rain, and grass. And grass. And grass. Yeehaw! Organic Valley grass milk. Organic milk from 100% grass-fed cows. Employee-owned Nugler's Brewing Company has been brewing and bottling beer for their friends, only in Wisconsin, since 1993. Just a short drive from Madison, come visit Swiss Wisconsin and see where your beer's made. Wisconsin's great outdoors has something for everyone. Come for the adventure, stay for the memories. Go wild in Wisconsin. To build your adventure, visit dnr.wi.gov. From production to processing, right down to our plates, there are over 15,000 employers in Wisconsin with career opportunities to fulfill your dreams and feed the world. Hungry for more? Shape your career with these companies and others at fabwisconsin.com. With additional support coming from The Conscious Carnivore, from local animal sourcing to on-site, high-quality butchering and packaging, The Conscious Carnivore can ensure organically raised, grass-fed, and healthy meats through its small group of local farmers. The Conscious Carnivore. Know your farmer. Love your butcher. Additional support coming from the Barocco Food Co-op, Central Wisconsin Craft Collective, Something Special from Wisconsin, Crossroads Collective, the La Crosse Distilling Company, as well as the Friends of PBS Wisconsin.